into the bacterial genome, become part of the bacterial genome, and that is called lysogeny. Now, lysogeny, which means it's a very temperate plunge. Because they survived there and together with the bacteria. Now, most of the time, they do the other one. They cause the burst. So, let's say you have a bacterial fudge. Okay? You, you attach to a bacteria. This bacteria will be completely bursted. And this is what we call it's a lytic, which means they hydrolyze. That's why we can make some of the antibacterial chemical. Now, I want to mention something. Is this always good? Not really. This is one of the theory. Why so? Why today? We had E. coli cause problem. They think a long time ago, those toxins coming from a bacterial part. Remember called the bacterial diphtheria? They think a long time ago, it's a beta fudge. Find a bacteria called the corner bacteria. They interpret it. And later on, this becomes an AB toxin. Same thing. Remember Staphylococcus aureus, toxic shock, sy uh, toxic shock sy syndrome? Remember clostridium botulinum, Shigate toxin, Vibro chlorotoxin, we all, we all mentioned? They all think it's coming from a bacteria, or coming from a virus. So they think about how this bacteria has toxin. Long time ago, a bacterial fudge injected their genome. The DNA, RNA into the bacterial genome, then they survive there. Later on, they become a toxin. Then we have a terminology for this lysogenic conversion. This is very important concept, as that's a seal. Okay? So we go back to see. We have a lytic cycle. The bacteria infected results cell lysis. So we call it a lytic fudge. Now some of the fudge, they will be targeting the bacteria, not cause lysis. So that's what we call it a lysogeny. But, le but not means it's good. Later on the bacteria will become a toxication material. Now we talk about the lysogen. There's some terminology. Bacteria cell that have the fudge DNA integrated into the host chromosome. So we call it a temperate phage, a bacteria capable of lysogeny. Now the example is lambda phage. Now based on these, we could separate them, go to prophage, temperate phage. Now we also, you need to know, whether the, back, the virus, a fudge, is going to be become a lytic, or will be lysa journey. It depends on the growth situation. Lots of the time, in a very, Friendly environments is going to become a lysogeny. In a very stress environment, it might become a light. So which cycle? It, it, it depends by their growth situation. So that's why the temperate fudge, they could be choose between lytic growth and the lysogenic growth. Now many of the bacteria, they become a tool in the lab research. That's why we call it a lysogen. Okay, here you can see the picture, very simple. The fudge bacterial chromosome. So you go inside, they using a bacteria machinery to direct the DNA synthesis, become a new fudge. Then the new fudge is gonna release, but the bacteria will be bursted or lysed. That's why we call it a lytic circle. Right here, instead of you call it lytic circle, the genome will be integrated into that during the cell division. Can you see it? They separate into two cells. And later on, what happened? The bacterial genome containing a small sequence, which is coming from a virus. 
This is to become a lysogenic circle, which is the temperate. Okay, then that genome here from the bacteria phage, we call it a prophage. But I want to tell you one thing. If you listen in the other class, this guy could be transferred to another bacteria. So, here you can see. Let's say this is a bacteria. Okay, we have a genome. Now the genome we with a virus. Okay, this is a bacteria phage genome there. This is a bacteria genome. This is usually not stable. They could go a new bacteria. Let's say this is a new bacteria. This guy could come in and become this. I separate. These type of transfer, we call it transduction. Remember, the genetic information can be transferred by three things, which is transformation. Remember, green fence experiment, we talk about DNA replication, that's transformation. This is called a transduction. The second one, rely on bacteriophage. So this is number one. Number two, what is the number three? Conjugation. This rely on F. Like. You need to go back to see the exam one, maybe lecture three or four. We talk a briefly about that. Those are the three methods for bacteria transferring uh, genetic information between uh, bacteria to bacteria. Okay? This is what we already mentioned. Okay, we already talked about it. Since virus is an obligate parasite, so they're not going to grow individually on the other place. When you see here, see those plagues there, transparent zone? Because we already put the bacteria there. So you're going to have to lay the bacteria first, then you put the virus. You will see these very trans transparent plagues. These things, we call it count them. And we call it PFU, plague forming units. And this is one of the way to cultivation bacteria. The second, thing, always you know, you can grow animal and the plant cells isolated, then to inject it with virus. The last thing, use the egg yolk, chicken eggs or some animal and the plants. Okay, that's another way to do it. So how we gonna determine the uh, population of a virus? Instead of we call it CFU, we using PFU. What this means? Plague forming unit. But always remember, because plague forming units, you already have a bacteria cell there. And the plague, we see the transparent zone. Usually, it's difficult to isolate it. So, this acceptable zone is. 20 to 200 is not 30 to 300. If, you, if it's more than 200, uh, basically you cannot differentiate it because it's too costly. So just want to let you know, they use a plague assays to do the test, which is can determine the plague forming unit, which means number of plagues per sample dilution. Okay, another way to do is using LD50. Um, this is something based on the gen uh, based on the statistics. So let's say I have a uh, hundred mice. Can you please stop talking there? And uh, let's say a hundred mice. I'm gonna infectious with a virus. Okay, part of them will be died. Part of them will be survived. Now I have to do different batches. And after do different batches, I may get let's say a hundred mice. I may guess the first batch I had a 40 survived. Second batch I had 70 survived. Third batch I had a 56 survived. Fourth one I had a 55. All these numbers you collected. So you use a statistics tool, you could determine what is the dose of the virus will cause statistically half of the sample died. That is called LD50 value. Now this is an indirect way to testing the virus, usually to see how infectious it is. So that's why we call it an infectious virus. 
So we talk about the virus. Some other things we haven't mentioned, varroids. If you still remember, in the first uh, class, we talk about the classification of microorganisms. We mentioned about varroids. What is varroids? It's single-stranded RNA. And the required host cell DNA dependent on the polymers to do the replication, cause plant disease. It's in Philippines back in 1996, all the palm trees has been contaminated with varroids and they died uh, rapidly in about like one month. All the trees are dying. How about the prions? And we mentioned about this is the first that happened is in the sheep called scrapes. Then there's a medical, di medical di disease happens and the bone, uh, bone wing sponge form in cell philosophy that is called BSE. That first founded in 1997 in Great Britain, in England. And then they transferred to the United States in 2003. So even today, because of the medical di disease, uh, China, Russia, and Australia still not uh, do the exploitation of any of the United States beef products. So if you uh, buy a beef jerky, let's say you're s selling in France to Australia, it will be not passing the custom thing. The last one happens in the human being, is always we call it a CJD, or like a Kulu uh, in humans. What that means? Those type of the prions usually cause you muscle, highly relaxed, and uh, not uh, like uh, contracted, contracted at all. So at the end of the day, the symptoms will be the laughing. So think about if you laugh about two hours, are you going to survive? So that's why they call it a laughing related diet disease. Because the muscle is always relaxed and never con contracted. And the name called CJD and called the Okay? So this <coughs> end up with the section we talk about all these viruses and the limited for the others. So we have some time. We want to talk a little bit about the um, um, exams. This is the one, the same, I have the handouts, you should read them, especially people not here. The practice <coughs> exam is I put it here, and then you can do it by yourself. I'll put the, uh, the answer real quick. Okay, I want to mention something. Is right here. In this final exam, the other questions are easy. You can look at my cheek. Very simple. But I want to go over these things for you to understand and for you to preparation the final exam. Because we were talking about um, so many of the food safety items, and there is the agencies, and lots of the acronyms. You should know what are those four names. Because you're in the United States of America. And it's important for you to know all these government agencies related to the food safety. And I tell you one thing. One year I was walking in the parking slot, in the parking lot, and one of the students said, I worked at the USDA AIS because I learned in your class and you introduced that agency to us. So you need to know the phone. I had a lot of questions I'm going to ask you about that. What is FDA, for example? Food and Drug Administration. What is USDA? FSIS. US Department of Agriculture. For the safety inspection service. What is CDC? This is people always will make a mistake. Centers for disease control. This is you know. And uh, 
prevention. Don't forget prevention. Okay, what is the FDA for? What is USDA FSIS responsible? Meat, egg, and the processed meat, poultry, processed egg, is that right? And this is responsible for the others. What is CD for? CDC for? Passenger surveillance. Okay, these are the solutions. Okay. What is GAPN? Good agri cultural practice. What are they talking about? You should remember. Safe soil. Clean water. Clean surface. Clean hands. Okay. What is PASA? Hazard analysis and political control points. What is PISMA? Food safety, modernization act. Which year did it become a law? Is that January 1st, 2011? Is it gives this uh, flexible for small farms? Yes. So, flexible for small farms. Yeah. What are the seven principles of hazard? Do you know about that? Conduct hazard analysis. Establish a critical control points. Establish a critical limits, because these critical limits never arrange a fixed number. Establish monitoring procedures. Establish conduct Corrective actions. Okay, what is number six? Verification and the validation procedure. What's the number seven? Record keeping. and documentation. Okay, these are the things you should, you should know. Why the temperature control is important for squadron? This, you're gonna go back to see the slide. Not right here. Um, go back to see the slides right here. Which one is important when we talk about? Uh, no. okay. This slide right there. Always 
just remember the water is counter current. If hot scattering, what happened? If too hot temperature, the fat will be accumulated in the chilling tank, cause cross contamination. If too cold water, let's say 35, 40 degrees Celsius, what is going to happen? Your cultivation bacteria. So the temperature control is very important for scattering. Okay, okay, so that's a key. Now, why PAA is more frequently than chlorine as antimicrobial during post harvest poultry processing? Because uh, lots of the U.S. meat is exported to Russia, and they are not, uh, and European countries, they are not accept chlorine as antimicrobial agents, they accept PAA. Okay? Acquire the immune system development right here. We need to describe the T cell and B cell line and describe all the de details, all the functions. Okay. All the other questions? Why helicobacter power can survive? Do you remember urea, ureas? Break down urea, become ammonia and carbon dioxide and neutralize water. The low pH. What is agglutination and the opsonization? Do you remember the agglutination? If you still forgot about it, look at the slides right here. If you forget about it, go ahead and look at it. What is agglutination? Cross linked with each other, cause company. What is opsonization? Antibody antigen reacted to bring a macrophage. That's called opsonization. Okay. Lysozyme, we know that. Lysozyme breaks down the cross link between NAG and NAM. Is that right? And all these are simple. Active immune response, which one? Antibody. Another name for immune grouping is what? Antibody. What is the foreign vaccines contain attenuated virus? Which ones contain attenuated? Attenuated, which means the most effective one. You only need one shot in your lifetime. That's MMR. Measles, mumps, and rubella. The tetanus components of DTAP is given to young children is a toxoid. Is that right? Toxic like chemicals. Is E. coli 057 is a major cause hemorrhagic in the United States? No. It's a major cause what? Hemorrhagic uremic syndrome. The humoral immune response depends against what? Everything. The humoral immune response different from cell mediated immune. What's the major difference? They both have memory cells. It's secretion of antibody. The variable domain of antibody molecules, what they do? Binds target antigen. Removing a person's normal drawer, what is going to happen? Lead to a disease, is that right? Serological reaction known as agglutination is what? Antibody antigen bind, binding. In the grand negative bacilli, uh, let's say E. coli, which antigen is related to the flagella? Is H, is that right? Now what is O157 H, what is O mean? Side the change of LPS, that's ceramic, if you still remember. Okay? Almost done, then. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, I'll put the detail key there. The key will be exactly the same exam paper, and you can print it out. Okay, last to say, three time slots for final exam. Number one, Thursday, 11 o'clock, right here. Number two, Friday afternoon, 12.30 to 3.30. Number three, university official time is Thursday, December 16th, that is early in the morning, 8 to 10. 
Okay. If you're doing very good, please do a good job. Don't give me an empty paper. You only have 20 points there. If you do not do very well, never give up. 140 points for grabbing. The final exam CC's bonus is required to handwriting in the classroom. It's not you give me a piece of paper from the computer. Okay, so require you write. Make sure your handwriting is recognized by other person and not confused person. Last thing, there is no cheating. And I tell you one thing, some of the TA complain me about in the lab exam, some people look for the others. If they find you, they grab your exam paper, it's gonna be zero. I just want to tell you, even I talk to the video, even people not here. Everybody does no cheating. You don't have to. It is so simple. Even if you're doing very good, you study all these practice exams, you get about 80 or 90 points. Plus, I already tell you what question we're going to test you. Like anti antibody structure. Uh, you should know about that. That's going to be extra points. I already said that. And the bonus points is already got, gave out. And I already gave you handouts. That's going to be the one of the major questions. So you already have things to prepare. That means we all test you is attitude. is not test your wisdom. Okay, so you have, I'm serious, it's not test to whether you're smart or your, your stupidity. It's all test to whether, are you really studying? Because all the questions is there. So you don't have to cheat it. It's no tricky. It's not like chemical, any chemistry class. So make sure nobody is cheating there. Okay, now I'm not going to be in the exam room all the time, but if my TA told me somebody is cheating, then you have some points from me off. I, I'm serious. Don't look for the others. How do you know they're correct? Maybe they're wrong. I'm serious. Some people get already 520. They only need like 20 points to get an A. Or they may just, just, just randomly pick, pick some answer there. How do you know they're serious and did, did that? And you may you need to get 90 points to get an A. So you look at the others, you may pick the wrong answer. I'm serious. So you should walk books by yourself and prepare all these questions. Okay? So that's all I have. And thank you uh, for the semester.